News. Um, the Police Federation is being inundated with calls from worried officers. They need to get to the bottom of what has happened fast and ease their concerns, don't they? Because it's a terrifying situation to be for, for thousands of people here and their families. Yeah. Yes, I think yeah, that's a good point. The, the families the, the families are of, uh, of police officers are usually overlooked, but the, the families are, are instrumental in all this because they're human beings. They, they go to work. Um, my experience here of what we call the troubles is a lot of police officers were murdered off duty as opposed to on duty. So it was a very, it's a very intimate form of terrorism. Um, in Northern Ireland, to describe it, some people call it the north of Ireland. It's essentially a big village. You know, it's 3% of the UK population. It's, you know, the size of Yorkshire. It's, it's not that big. So people do know each other. Something like this will have more impact. Some police officers will look at it uh, with great trepidation and will be more worried than, than other officers. And William, think, when you were... Sorry. A, a, just, sorry to interrupt. I just got so much to ask you. When you were a serving officer, what, what was daily life like for you, the steps you had to take to protect yourself and your family? Yeah. Well, I, I joined at 18. And, and to be honest, I, I went into it with uh, my eyes totally closed. I was more interested in a uh, blonde uh, and a, a Yamaha RT250 and how Ireland was doing in the, the triple crown than policing. So there's a degree of naivety with me. And as as a young teenager, uh, and I grew up in a, in a council estate, uh, a mixed council estate, by mixed I mean Catholic and Protestant, um, there was a... There was a degree of uh, it, it was me and another me and another constable shared a room. It was a Protestant and a Catholic, both of us eighteen, and we were as green as anything. And what we did, and I don't think either of us realised, was our mother and father all of a sudden had joined the police organisation, which traditionally I didn't even realise the history of Ireland that that there's a a certain hostility uh, to the police. There's a culture almost of of anti police. And when, when I joined, I put, it was my mother and father at uh, great risk, to be honest. And they suffered because the first time I had to move house was from the family home. And they were the ones who took the sort of full brunt of it with the house being damaged, etc. So it does, for police officers, where I come from, you're very conscious then when you're married, you had a family. Um, certain areas you avoid. There's only certain places that you can live. Mm. You can't go out openly talk about what you do. You don't want to be seen in your police uniform. So you try to walk that, that line between being discreet and just telling open lies, bearing in mind that you have to have bring up a family, bring up your children. Do you tell them explicitly what you do? When do you tell them what you, what you do? When I went, when we went on holidays, it was like, what does daddy work at? I always avoid, it as a rule, Irish bars, because as soon as you go in, What's your name? Where are you from? Where do you work at? So policing here, particularly for uh, people from the Catholic community, is very difficult because there's a, a history of not supporting the police and, and being and being basically alien yeah. to the police where the, the police are just, they're, they're not popular. And the names that you're, the sort of the slurs, they also they almost became a culture.